In the far corners of our planet, hidden amidst dense jungles and remote landscapes, exist uncontacted tribes, communities that have deliberately chosen isolation from the modern world. These tribes live untouched by technology, globalization, and the rapid changes that characterize contemporary society. While the allure of exploring the unknown might tempt some adventurous souls, it's crucial to recognize that these tribes have chosen seclusion as a means of survival, and their isolation must be respected, or else. Hi, my name is AJ with Most Amazing, and these are the top 10 uncontacted tribes you should never visit. At number 10 is the Sentinelese, which I'm getting out of the way now, as this tribe is a fan favorite on this channel. Inhabiting North Sentinel Island in the Bay of Bengal, these tribal people have maintained an unwavering resistance to their interactions with the outside world. Their stance is clear. They'll go to extremes to protect their isolation, even taking lethal measures against trespassers. The Indian government recognized the importance of leaving them be, designated by the island's tribal reserve in 1956, essentially saying, hands off everybody. Estimating their population isn't easy, naturally, with figures ranging from 15 to 500 individuals, but the probable range is about 15 to 200. These hunter-gatherers rely on bows and arrows for wildlife hunting and seafood gathering. Agriculture role in their lives remain uncertain due to our lack of insight. And although brief contact was established in 1991, visits all halted in 97. Despite our curiosity, respecting their desire for solitude ultimately takes precedence. If you're enjoying this video so far, please support the channel by pressing like, subscribing to Most Amazing, and ringing that notification bell. At number 9, the Awa Tribe. With a known population of roughly 350 individuals, their story is one of resilience and struggle against the encroaching tide of modernity. Despite efforts by about 100 Awa members to remain uncontacted, their isolation has been compromised over the years. Escaping European incursions in the 1800s, they transitioned to a nomadic existence, seeking sanctuary amidst the forest embrace. Their fight for survival took a promising turn in 1982 as the Brazilian government secured funding for their protection, but bureaucracy's languid dance delayed action for over two decades. Tragedy looms as illegal lodgers devastate their habitat and even even a young Awa girl met an unimaginable fate at their hands. Survival International, a human rights organization, warns that the Awa stand as the most threatened tribe globally. As their forest sanctuary vanishes at an alarming rate, the urgency for action intensifies to safeguard this tribe. At number 8 is the Moxa Titu, one of the few remaining uncontacted tribes within the Yanomami people. This group resides in a forest region riddled with illegal miners. Their untouched existence harbors profound significance echoing the heritage of their Yanomami counterparts. Reports from contacted Yanomami mention the sporadic sightings of Moxatitu, yet their isolated haven is under dire threat. The swarm of illegal miners introduces lethal diseases, endangering their health. Moreover, potential interactions between the tribe and miners entail catastrophic conflicts. The miners' practices, employing high-pressure hoses and mercury, devastate the land and contaminate the rivers. This contamination wreaks havoc on the flora and fauna, the tribe's sole source of sustenance. An alarming amplification of mercury-related health concerns looms over this tribe due to the pollutants. Consequently, venturing into their untouched realm might inadvertently catalyze their downfall, emphasizing the vital importance of safeguarding their isolation amidst lurking perils. At number 7 are the Sapanawa, residing in the uncontacted frontiers stretching across Peru, Bolivia, and Brazil, existing within a region teeming with uncontacted tribes, making it a unique hub of human isolation. A tragic turn of events thrust some Sapanawa into contact in 2014 when their homes fell victim to an outsider attack, leaving them with no choice but to connect with the outside world. This catastrophe was fueled by various factors, including illegal lodgers, substance smugglers, and even heedless missionaries in the area. The consequences are dire. Not only do the outsiders disrupt their way of life, but they inadvertently carry diseases that these tribes lack immunity against. While we might harbor defenses, these tribes remain vulnerable. The complex web of issues reminds us of the delicate balance between preserving cultural isolation and addressing the grave threats that encroach upon it. At number 6 are the Toromona. The Toromona, indigenous to Bolivia, dwell near the upper Madidi River and Heath River in the Amazon Basin's northwestern region. Their isolation remains remarkably intact, barring interactions even with other indigenous groups. Notably, a Norwegian biologist, Vanna 
vanishing in 1997 sparked a widespread fascination with the tribe. Although sporadic sightings persisted, the Toromona's existence largely evaded verification. An intriguing account arises from the Araona people who discussed encountering a group voluntarily detached from the world on the Manurivi River's eastern bank. Although unconfirmed, these individuals are widely believed to be the Toromona. Bolivia's move to safeguard these uncontacted tribes manifested in a 2006 administrative resolution that cordoned off a pristine zone within the Madini National Park. This refuge stands as a testament to the determination to preserve the Taramona's autonomy and secluded way of life. At number 5, the aforementioned Ayorio, indigenous to the Gran Chaco in Bulgaria and Paraguay, present a complex story. About 5,600 years ago, Ayorio individuals exist today, with roughly 100 adhering to the traditional nomadic hunter-gatherer lifestyle, untouched by modern society. Their history is marked by both contact and isolation. See, back in the 1700s, Jesuits aimed to convert them to Catholicism, but left them alone after the mission's abandonment. Fast forward to the 1900s and the Chaco War introduced diseases and turmoil, portraying the Ario tribe as obstacles to both Bolivia and Paraguay. Soldiers were even encouraged to eliminate these tribesmen for their release. Missionaries' actions from the 1940s to the 1970s coerced Arios from their land, eradicating their culture. The tragic event of 1986 exposed the perils of forced contact, and today, both contacted and uncontacted Aorios face threats like deforestation, territorial disputes, oil exploitation, and discrimination. Delving into these threats would be fascinating, but let's maintain our pace. At number 4, the Karafawiana people are an extremely small group of only 50 people who remain extremely uncontacted, and so information on this particular tribe is quite scarce. They're located within the Amazon regions of Brazil, so like many of the other tribes that live in that area, they're threatened by illegal illegal lodging, oil companies, and destruction of their land. It's believed that they practice a religion that's based on the other living creatures and things around them, such as plants and animals, but the specifics of this religion remain a mystery. They are a nomadic group of hunter-gatherers, and it's unclear if they partake in any kinds of agriculture or horticulture. While it would of course be super interesting to know about this tribe and their people, it's kind of refreshing to hear about a tribe we know so little about because they have mostly been left alone. Of course, that doesn't mean the outside world has been great to them, but just less worse. I know Number three, the Mabuti tribe are an indigenous group in the Congo region of Africa. They are a contacted group, but they remain in voluntary isolation to continue their traditional ways of life. They are hunter-gatherers who see the forest as their protector. The forest is actually the basis for all of their mythology and spiritual beliefs, which is super cool. They live in villages, and each of these huts houses one family unit. They live in a fairly equal society, but they do have leaders, usually the men who are the best hunters. Despite remaining isolated, they do sometimes offer trades with outside outsiders and other indigenous tribes. The Mbuti are threatened for a few reasons because their territory is unprotected. Not only are they no longer allowed to hunt large game on their own land because of deforestation, gold mining, and modern influences from plantations, agriculturists, and efforts to conserve the forest, their food supply is threatened. If that wasn't enough, they've also been targets of mass euthanization campaign, which is absolutely horrifying. At number two, the Deslala are an indigenous group of people in Brazil living under the lower Val do Javari in the western Amazon basin. These people are split into two groups, one splinter group led by a woman named Maya, that's around 23 people, while the larger group is around 150. The split between these groups came from a dispute between around 20 members, and while the larger group remains quite isolated, the smaller group has had some infrequent contact with neighboring settlements. The hunting and war weapon of choice of this tribe is the club, but they're also known to use poison darts. Both the men and women of this tribe paint themselves with red dye that's made from plants. There's little that's known about their religious or spiritual practices, but it's known that they live in communal huts, which is something that's different from many of the uncontacted tribes in today's list. This tribe has a long history with the of indigenous people, so it makes sense that they want to remain isolated and have not welcomed outside contact very much since the 1950s. In 1996, there began expeditions to try and make peaceful contact, but this tribe are known to eliminate trespassers on their land, which we cannot truly blame them for, as the most recent known incident of this nature came in the year 2000, when three lumbermen were eliminated near the native reservation. At number one, the Nukak are a tribe who live in the depths of the tropical forest, just on the fringe of the Amazon basin. They're nomadic hunter-gatherers, 
and they practice small scale shifting horticulture. This tribe is a little different than the others on this list because of the fact that they aren't exactly considered uncontacted anymore. They were uncontacted up until about 1981 when they were contacted by the new tribe's mission, which is now called Ethnos 360. And since then, they've lost at least half of their tribe, mostly due to disease. Much of their territory has been used by coca growers, ranchers, and other settlers, as well as being occupied by guerrillas, army, and paramilitaries. Many of the new CAC still live their traditional lifestyles, but because of the growing threats to them, in 2006, a group of around 80 tribe members left the jungle to assimilate in an attempt to preserve their culture. One of the people in this group explained, we do want to join the white family, but we do not want to forget the words of the new cock. The uncontacted tribes scattered across the world are more than just mere curiosities. They represent living testaments to the diversity of human culture and adaptability of humanity. It's imperative that we uphold their right to remain undisturbed, respecting the choices they have made for their own existence. As we contemplate the mysteries of these uncontacted tribes, let's let their stories serve as a reminder of the delicate balance between curiosity and responsibility. Preserving their way of life ensures that the rich tapestry of human heritage remains intact for generations to come, fostering a world where diversity is cherished. As always, if there's an uncontacted tribe you think I've missed, feel free to let me know down in the comments. This has been AJ with Most Amazing, and I'll catch you all in a later video. Peace out.